Hello everyone, I am Ahmad Aid, software engineer at the Fulterans Group at Meta. We are a group focused on improving the reliability of our system by making it resilient to failures. Today, I and my colleague Rago are going to talk about the evolution of disaster recovery at Meta, from preparing our infrastructure to be resilient to single region failure to grid supply problem and multi regional outages. No discussion about disaster recovery can start without an intro of a meta region. A typical meta region consists of multiple data centers, the H shaped structure that you can see, with a capacity equivalent to 150 megawatt of power consumption. Now, let's start with some historical context on how disaster recovery program at Meta was born. In October 2012, Hurricane Sandy came within 30 miles of our Ashburn data center and within a few hundred miles of our Forest City data center. The destruction of either data center would have been devastating to our business, since ASH was fiber optic cable hub that connected us to the rest of the world, and FRC contained all our database primaries. Also at that time, Meta was distributed across only three major data centers, and we were not prepared for the loss of an entire region. With plans to grow our infrastructure at that time, the likelihood of regional disaster happening was growing, and we started to ask ourselves if we can run meta products without one of our regions, and disaster recovery program was born as a result. Before we deep dive, let's go through the high-level agenda for our talk today. First, we will start with some background information about disaster recovery program at Meta. Then Rago will deep dive into the new risks on horizon and how we are preparing our infra to be resilient to such failures. Later, I will talk about evolving our single region DR program to multi-region DR programs, and how site degradation helps as a complementary solution for the physical buffer. At last, we will give you a preview of the key insight and future direction for the DR program at Meta. After Hurricane Sandy, we started to look at the single region failure mode to understand how we can prepare our infra to handle such an instance. Here is abstraction for meta region across the world. Let's assume that one of US region has a potential risk due to natural disaster, like hurricane or winter storm, or even due to physical failures. Our strategy here will be, let's drain the region. Drain the region means let's evacuate the database primaries outside the region and reroute the traffic to the other healthy regions. This might not be straightforward if other regions are already consuming all the available capacity, so moving more demand to the other region may cause overload to them. In addition to that, this wouldn't work if we don't have the global replication for our databases to make sure we have the right data available even if one of our regions is down. To make our infrastructure resilient to single region failures and to make sure there is no user impact during such an incident, we as a company decided to add extra capacity or buffer, which makes the healthy region have enough resources to absorb the traffic from the faulty region without any overload risks. We call this the DR buffer. And we work closely with capacity planning team to make sure that services have the minimal capacity needed to survive single region failures. With this as current state, all the healthy region are running and consuming our DR buffer. DR storms are disaster readiness exercises where we isolate a production region to validate the end-to-end -end readiness for the single region failures. All of this happens in production environment while being transparent to users. And we have been running zero notice single region DR storms in production environment for the last few years. All the work we did here to prepare our infra to handle single region failure helped us significantly to improve our instant response during disaster when we had to disconnect the region to isolate it. Our story to handle single region failure didn't end here, since we started to observe new risks like grid failure impacting our data centers and putting them at risk of load shipping. Let me hand it over to Rago to deep dive into power risks and how we are preparing our infra to handle such failures. Thank you, Ahmed. I'm Raghavendra Prabhu, a software engineer in the fault tolerance group at Meta. As Ahmed was mentioning, while we had achieved complete confidence in our readiness against loss of one region over the years, we noticed a new risk on the horizon. This pertained to the electrical grid-related risk for our data centers. 
while we were prepared to lose one region in terms of sheer raw capacity, we were not prepared for this particular mode of failure in terms of impact on the recovery of services as well as the data center itself. Let's look into one such risk encountered. All of this started in the winter of 2022 with a curious case of a DC incident. One of our critical European data centers was at risk of load shedding, also known as demand curtailment from our grid provider. In the worst case, we were looking at uncontrolled power loss of the data center. The risk spanned over an unbounded period of time, lasting over peak consumption hours each day and potentially over multiple weeks. Complete regional shutdown had not been exercised or tested in our disaster readiness exercises in the past. We had a limited time to prepare and exercise this, and thus we had entered an uncharted territory. In terms of deciding factors, the key ones were number one, response window. Now, this relates to the window of response that was available to us once notified by the great provider, which was a matter of few hours or mere minutes. Today, we are talking about the case where response window was in the order of a few hours due to presence of generators in addition to rack battery units. Number two, state transition. We had only exercised DR buffers, as Ahmed mentioned, with network disconnection in the past. Never in the history of disaster recovery had we ever shut down a fully functioning production region. Now, this entailed transitioning a large DC region, serving user traffic, live streams, undergoing several maintenances and upgrades, and exchanging several terabits per second of inter-region traffic to a complete standstill. Imagine that. This mammoth feat was not exercised in the past. And finally, recovery time. Recovery time here refers to the time it takes to restore a power down region back to its former glory once the power supply has been restored. This recovery window is critical. Why? Because it needs to be deterministic, repeatable and well bounded. Without actually exercising the shutdown and recovery completely, this recovery window was unknown. And to make matters worse, we could not even rule out a full rebuild of the data center in the worst case without testing it. Now, to prepare for this in terms of understanding the recovery and guaranteeing a well-bounded recovery duration, we decided to exercise this scenario as a new DR storm. This is where DR power storms were born. Power storm is a mammoth disaster readiness exercise where a typical production region is brought to a complete stop, one where all services and servers are gracefully transitioned to a power down state and observed for a few hours and finally recovered again. A typical power storm has three stages. First is isolating the region, which involves cordoning a region off by moving into region and user traffic away from it through WIPs. Critical state transfer in the form of replica rebuilds and database primary promotions also take place here. Second, graceful shutdown, where all data plane services are shut down gracefully and reaped through an asynchronous mechanism in our data center. These signals are mediated by our container orchestrator, which needs to be available all the way till the end. Subsequently, all servers are shut down remotely and the region is brought to an absolute zero state where nothing is running in the region. We leave the region in the state for a few hours. And finally, recovery, which involves bootstrapping this regional orchestrator and once stable, starting data plane services and kicking off the recovery. Recovery involves warming up of various caches, replication catch-up, and any other full or incremental state transfers. And once the region is healthy, we re-enable the WIPs and region starts serving traffic back again. It's important to note, while this can be tested in a small or a test region, exercising in production at scale is key. Once sufficient confidence has been achieved. Since our first power storm in 2022, we have executed multiple full-scale power storms. No discussion of DR exercise is complete without discussion of dragons encountered while entering this new uncharted territory. Let's discuss one. During our storm, we encountered an issue arising out of interactions between regional orchestrator and data plane, which complicated and delayed the recovery process. It started when this regional orchestrator shut down and reaped the data plane services through this asynchronous signaling mechanism described earlier. Unfortunately, the signal led to the orchestrator also being unavailable 
due to its critical dependencies being gripped and shut down. Now at this point, we were left with roughly 50% of these zombie, so-called zombie data plane services, which were still running and not reaped by this orchestrator. And finally, to remediate this, the orchestrator itself could not be jump-started since it was dependent on itself to restore. A non-standard complicated recovery process was required to remediate this subsequently. Which brings us to the key lesson. Pay attention, pay very close attention to your critical dependencies in a fast-changing, dynamic environment. In other words, ensure a clear delineation between regional control plane and data plane and ensure any critical dependencies between them are avoided in the shutdown and recovery paths. Finally, for fast-changing environments such as ours, tracking dependencies in the CI-CD stages through frameworks such as Belljar has also helped. Now, it doesn't end there. While we were looking at these grid-related issues in Europe, our infrastructure spanning multiple continents was simultaneously at risk from other sources too. This was even more evident in the winter of 2022 when multiple other risk factors were prevalent at the same time. Let me hand over to Ahmed to take it from here and talk about this further. Thanks, Raghu. Over the last few years, we started to observe overlap of multiple events that might impact our region simultaneously. As an example, in the winter of 2022, as Raghu mentioned, we encountered electrical grid-related risks in Europe, which put our EU region at risk of load shedding. In parallel to that, winter storm and hurricane risks in the United States which enveloped a large region in mainland US. There was also scope of software failures bringing down a region while another region was already impacted by the previous risks. What's common to all of this is the fact that Meta was at risk of losing more than one region simultaneously. This is what we call as multi-regional outages and we started to work on multi-regional disaster recovery program to prepare our infra be resilient to such failures. Now, let's start with some background information about the problem, then we will discuss the risks and our strategy to handle such failures. To define the problem, multi-regional outages are large-scale outages, where more than one region is impacted. We will focus today about MRTR events where two regions are impacted. And as our infrastructure grows, the likelihood of multi-regional outages increase and we anticipate to see such failure happening more often. The diagram here shows the mean and median for the time between two region failures are getting smaller, which means that we anticipate MRDR events to happen more often in the upcoming few years. Risks of MRDR are still similar to the risks we encountered while working on a single region DR program. Overload, since demand can exceed supply, leading to melting down our infrastructure. Demand here refers to the user traffic on our family of apps and supply refers to our serving capacity which cover only single region failures. Data unavailability, since we store the data replicated across or with majority core. So losing two or more region can lead to data unavailability if we don't have the right data replication and placement. Today, we will deep dive into our strategy to mitigate overload risks during MRDR, and hopefully we can discuss our strategy for data unavailability in the upcoming at scale presentations. With this as current state for our infrastructure, after we had to disconnect one of the US region due to hurricane risks, all the healthy region are running and consuming all the available capacity. With the ongoing risks of load shedding in Europe, Draining the EU region is not an option, since all the healthy region are running and consuming all the DR buffer. We started to ask ourselves, shall we add more capacity as we did in single region failure, but there were, were multiple challenges for this approach. MRDR events can go beyond two region down, so adding more capacity is not a scalable solution. Supply chain and capacity crunch problem is another challenge and getting capacity will take time, given meta-infrastructure scale. Based on that, we have decided to change our buffer-based DR strategy 
to site degradation based DR strategy, where every service in our infra will degrade themselves gracefully to relate the demand and survive the MRDR events. This is a clear trade off between throwing capacity and degrading our product during MRDR, and site degradation strategy works well for two region failures and we are iterating on it to minimize the impact on users during such events. Back to our map here, after we apply site degradation techniques like service level degradation, request shedding, or delaying the non-critical request or jobs, we'll free up some capacity that can be used as a complementary solution for the DR physical buffer. Now, we can start draining the AU region with confidence that other regions have enough resources to consume the extra demand without any overload risks. Key takeaway here is site degradation can be used as a complementary scalable solution for the physical buffer to prevent overload during MRDR events. The question now is how Meta degrades the entire infrastructure. Unified site degradation is the answer. Unified site degradation is a portfolio of solution to degrade the service gracefully or non-gracefully, to reduce the demand instantly when the demand exceeds our ability to serve it. And we do have multiple degradations technique, like DEF CON, which is a service level degradation where we turn off the non-critical feature to reclaim some capacity to serve our core functionality. Request shedding solution to control the demand across our infra as a last line of defense to prevent cascading failures. Or delaying the execution for the non-critical request or jobs to reclaim some capacity during disasters. Please refer to the last year's talk in the reliability at scale for more details about DEF CON and unified site degradation techniques. Now, let's talk about validation, which is really important for any disaster response tool to make sure it's ready to be used when needed. We rely on two validation techniques to reason about our infra readiness to handle MRDR. Validation through testing, where we do execute protection tests to measure the capacity saving from the different degradations technique. In addition to that, we also execute failure-based tests tailored to the failure scenario. As an example, we execute MRDR event where we disconnect to region with support of degradations to validate the end-to-end -end solutions. Testing in production comes with cost, especially when site degradation is needed. And to minimize the impact on users, we started to invest in auditing to extrapolate the signal we are getting from small-scale tests to reason about the M-Frame RDR readiness while running glass tests. This was our story to evolve our DR program at Meta from handling single region failure to new risks on horizon, like power and multi-regional outages. With that, I will hand it over back to Ragu to present our key insight for our talk today and the future work for the disaster recovery program at Meta. Thank you again, Ahmed. Having discussed evolution of disaster recovery, spanning power storms, overload readiness, and unified site degradation, let's summarize the key insights and note what lies ahead of us in this constantly evolving space. In terms of key insights, let's start with adaptability. When it comes to disaster readiness, be prepared to pivot fast when a new risk arises. Adaptability is key. Map is not territory is a good mental model here, which in other words means no static map can completely chart the risk of territory since this space is constantly evolving. Second, make sure to test your data centers and for key fault domains through a complete life cycle. Only by exercising and recovering successfully at scale can sufficient confidence towards large scale risks be achieved. Third, degradation is a critical strategy in DR. In other words, degradation is critical in DR failure scenarios as a complementary solution to prevent site overload. Don't be afraid to degrade your entire infra during disasters, especially given the current state of supply chain and capacity crunch problems. Finally, auditing is key for end-to-end -end infra validation, which means although testing service degradation in production is critical and helps us immensely in gaining confidence for emergency scenarios, auditing is equally important to extrapolate these signals and help reason about the MRDR readiness for the entire infrastructure. 
Next, let's look at what lies ahead of the DR team in this space. And also to echo what I mentioned earlier, keep an eye out for presentations relating to these in future at scale conferences. In this talk, we focused on situations where a region is shut down with a buffer of few hours. This is only one side of the coin. Looking forward, we are also exploring and exercising recovery from scenarios where a region may lose power near instantaneously. Window of response in such cases is in the order of seconds to minutes based on battery capacity. Only the most critical of state transfers such as primary promotions can be performed here. Hence, understanding trade-offs and prioritizing response strategies is of utmost importance here. Lack of explicit control over shutdown and a very short window of time associated with it introduces significant stress on the systems at scale and also a high risk of overload. Hence, this is a challenging as well as exciting problem to solve. Second is continuous overload validation, which means over on the overload front, we want to track the MRDR overload readiness for the entire infra on a continuous basis with our bimodal validation strategies of testing and auditing. Now, this also helps ensure that infra is overload resilient by reducing impact on users and businesses as much as possible. With this, the talk comes to a conclusion. We would like to thank all our partners and team members from Meta for making this possible. Please do get in touch with us after the talk for any questions. Thank you very much.